short term, um, we obviously need to make some advances in terms of workers' rights, um, how we make decisions about the environment, how we make decisions about development right. that um, include those who are most impacted. And that's kind of the, a very basic principle um, that today is really largely lacking. Right now, the power structure, the people who have money, that being government and industry, decide what happens to a neighborhood. We were talking earlier about low-income housing, right, for example. Right. Around the country right now, there's a, uh, a tremendous push to tear down old public housing facilities and replace them with mixed income housing units. Yep. And some of the housing is for low income people, but much of the housing is actually for middle and high income people and, and low income people are getting squeezed out. So this is a response, a grassroots movement saying, we aren't gonna take it anymore. We're gonna organize. And that's how social change happens But in, in our analysis. And when you look at social movements historically, people have to come together and um, gather information, get organized, and take collective action. So Paul Hawken talks about in his, his new book, uh, Blessed Unrest, that this is really a, a movement of movements, that there isn't any single leader in the social justice movement or in the environmental movement like there might have been in the, in the 60s or 70s, that these days, and, and maybe this is the experiment that, that the uh, World Social Forum helps bring together is that it's this networking and supplied by the internet and, and forms of communication globally that weren't available before so that people can talk about mass demonstrations or public awareness action committees, dem um, marches and things like that so that you can more quickly and effectively counter some of the land use policies that we're talking about, gentrification, yes. um, or catch the polluters before the toxic waste sites get to be too high. This is and very much what Paul Hawken is talking about. And the beauty of the U.S. Social Forum is the connections between uh, historically disparate movements. So the labor movement has not been collaborating very much historically with the environmental movement, for example. And now, at places like the Social Forum, they're very much coming together, sharing ideas and tactics, and, awesome. and coming to a common agenda that we're all on the same side, right. that when you have strong workers' rights, um, that means in checking capitalism in some form, and that's what environmental protection ultimately requires is um, putting the brakes on this constant externalization and borrowing from future generations. But I'm also encouraged by the response to, to business in some aspects, that they know that the most productive workers are the happiest workers, and the, the most productive environments are the environments that are sustainable for the, the long run. And so you see some of the, these ideas coming through in the, in the green economy now. And, and at the Green Festival here in Chicago, there must have been at least six or eight uh, business schools that were offering MBAs in natural capitalism or eco-economics and they're trying to account for these things that have been externalized to such a level that we can't take it anymore, you know, and uh, when people are marginalized to the fringe, they're no longer going to be a good labor force and so um, taking care of our society in a sustainable philosophy um, doesn't have to be a, a, a contrast in the end between social justice, uh, environmental externalities, or the economy. That the, it's a false trade-off in a lot of ways. I, don't know I, what I would agree on. for the most part that it is a false trade-off. The reality is that uh, there is a plethora or there is a tremendous abundance though of labor, of people who yeah. need work. And so industry can afford to externalize to that labor force and cause them harm and um, basically mine them just like we're mining natural resources like coal and oil in the ground. Humans are a resource that industry is now mining and harming um, yeah. consistently and it's, it's, there are some companies and there is a growing awareness certainly in the economy that there is a better way to do business that is more sustainable, that's more people friendly, and more planet friendly. Unfortunately, it's it's naive to say that this is going to come about purely by market forces. Yeah, there's just no good ecological or scientific basis to that theory. 
that basically trickle down economics, right? That if you build we a strong all survive on a trickle. If you that, if you build a strong economy, that will rise, uh, that will float all boats. And what it has done instead, it is completely stratified.